Brock Purdy, welcome back to Sports Spectrum. Yes, sir. Thank Didn't you expect to be talking to you in yeah. person like this, but yes, here we are yep. uh, with an opportunity to catch up with you um, pretty recently after everything that went down here this past 2022 into 2023 season. Um, before we get into kind of reflecting a little bit, uh, how are you? Because we're talking literally a couple of weeks, a week and a half after the NFC Championship game. How's your arm? How are you feeling? Yeah. Um, I mean, it took me a couple of days just to get over the game and the situation of how it all went down. But um, I'm, I'm in good spirits now. I know where where I'm at with the Lord and my life and everything. So I'm very thankful for how everything has gone and how it's all played out. But um, arms, you know, we're letting everything cool down and then yeah. make a decision in the next couple of weeks on what I have to do moving forward. But yeah, but yeah. that's good. That's good to hear. Um, as I wanted to sit and talk with you and kind of reflect on this 2022 season and about the highest of highs and the lowest of lows in many ways in terms of uh, on the field that you can experience. Um, but yet we just had a moment here where we're at your house in Arizona and the doorbell, not, you know, the doorbell rang or somebody knocks and it's two kids, 12 year old kids who live down the road, very close, obviously, and, uh, and just wanted to meet you and get your autograph. And it made me think, first of all, it put me back to being 12. And if I lived near Danny White or Tony Dorsett, I would have been like in, in heaven, like being able to knock on that door and get an autograph. But it also made me think about like the elevation of your platform this year and what that was like. So I'd like to start there. God really took you uh, to places maybe I don't even know if you even dreamed of. Maybe you did. But an opportunity to become a starting quarterback in the NFL and lead your team to an NFC championship game. When you think about where you were, let's say a year ago, February 2022, to where God has brought you today, a lot more people know who Brock Purdy was today than maybe they did 2022 a year ago. Um, what kind of comes to mind? Just an overarching thought on what this past year has been like for you now that you can kind of look back and reflect a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is um, just how faithful God is just by nature of who he is. Um, you know, a year ago, after my senior year of college, so a year ago, I'm sitting there and I'm talking to, you know, Coach Campbell and my parents and I'm like, man, I don't know if this is going to work out. I don't know if football's in my future. Like, I don't know what it looks like, but I'm going to you know, I'm going to just go with, you know, uh, the whole process of getting ready for the combine and then the draft. And if I get a shot with an NFL team, great. Um, and I'm going to put my head down and go to work and, and see what God does with me. Um, but I had no idea. And I'm not going to lie, I had a lot of doubt. I had a lot of doubt of if football was even in the picture. And mm -hmm. I was starting to get ready for whatever else God had for me in my life. Um, you know, whatever that career looked like. Um, I was starting to just think about different things. And so, um, yeah, just overall how God is faithful. He's never done with a story, even when you think he is. And, um, yeah, that's probably the first thing that comes, comes to mind. You say God is faithful as you started to see this story sort of play out. And we talked to your mom and your dad being here and kind of going through what that journey was like for them being drafted, making the team, getting the first start, going to the playoffs. When you think about all of the moments that God kind of orchestrated in your journey this past year, um, he remains faithful, certainly. But what was it that you learned about yourself in this process of going forward and finding and seeing all that God brought you to do? Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, one of the things that you know I had been reading throughout the season was uh, Mark 8, 34. It talks about Jesus is telling his disciples, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. And... It also talks about um, if you try to hold on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll save it. Mm. And so I think really that is just like I feel like the message of the whole season with all the stuff that had happened, coming in, playing, um, then having success um, and maintaining that success, getting to the playoffs and doing all these things that, you know, a rookie quarterback hadn't really done in NFL history. And with myself and like my mindset with it was exactly that, that verse that Jesus had told his disciples thousands of years ago. Um, and I didn't want to grip on to this life of, oh, my gosh, I'm in the NFL. I have a starting quarterback role. I'm, you know, I, I can't lose it. That was it was flipped. I was reminded, you know, um, of what Jesus had to told us um, mm -hmm. thousands of years ago in terms of don't try to hold on to your life. You're going to lose it. You know, and the world wants you to go this way or that way. And uh, the, the minute you have fame and if you're trying to chase status and money and all this kind of stuff, it's 
you'll lose your life um, rather than, you know, denying yourself, picking up your cross, keeping my eyes on Jesus and his promises. And um, through that, like that's, that's life. And that's um, a life worth living. And that's how you save your life. And that's in Christ. So it's beautiful to hear. Um, yet you're a competitor. You're an athlete. You're yep. a guy that wants to do the best that you can. Obviously you had a great year. Is there a moment in this process where you figured I think I can do this. Like, I think I'm meant, not, not even a moment, maybe it was in a game, right? But there's a moment where you were like, all right, the doubt that you had thought about that may have been creeping in and you get into whatever moment that is, whether it's training camp or a practice or a game or whatever, where you say, like, okay, I think, I think I, I belong here. Yeah. Did you have one of those moments? I think it was just a, an accumulation of, you know, practice reps and plays just really throughout training camp. And then obviously you get into the preseason and, and you're playing in those games and having some success. But, you know, I think practice, I was making some throws and, and handling things in the offense and, and in, in the huddle where I was like, you know, I can do this. And I definitely, you know, I'm not comparing myself to anyone or anything, but I believe that I can. I'm making yeah. these throws and I'm getting, you know, my teammates attention and everything like that. Um, and I had some guys, some vets that, you know, I've been playing for a while and they've been to different places and they told me like, dude, you have what it takes. And so sort of just hearing that was great, but yeah. overall, man, just relying on the Lord and what his plan was and, and truly believing that he had something written out for me, whether that was football or, or whether it wasn't, I wasn't trying to hold on to being an NFL player or anything like that. I, I allowed him to just do what he wanted to with me. So. And then it all just unfolded in the right way. We saw what happened on the field and this sort of Cinderella story. But we talked to a lot of guys about what it was like to grow in the Lord during a long season. We've talked to a lot of chaplains this year. We've had Reverend Earl Smith on many times, the 49ers team chaplain, who is just a dynamite man. Uh, his story, by the way, if you don't know it, is ridiculous. Yeah. So I encourage everybody to go back and, and, and read up on his story. But what was it like for you acclimating yourself as a rookie and growing in your faith? Forget, every, again, everything that happened on the field is amazing. and God kind of orchestrated that too. But there's still a lot of moments for many weeks there where you're not playing and you're a backup and a guy who's just trying to find his way as a professional. But what about growing in your faith and acclimating yourself into a professional locker room? Yeah, um, I think it's cool just because you know, I didn't know what to expect going into a professional locker room, who's a believer, who's not, or any of that kind of stuff. And um, I was very fortunate and blessed to have guys like Charlie Warner, Christian McCaffrey, Pastor Earl Smith, Oren Burks, these guys that are just solid believers. And, you know, we'd meet before road games and, and uh, just have our little Bible studies. And But the biggest thing for me was, man, having fellowship. You know, mm -hmm. you're in a, in a crazy business. You're on the road. You're going to different places. But to have guys that believe in the Lord and, and can help you and, and pour into you with their experiences and everything, I, I found that huge. And so that's something that I want to do moving forward with guys that are coming in and to just pour into them, you know, obviously just have the wisdom of playing um, and what it looks like to continue to serve the Lord in a business like this. So I'm very thankful for those men in my life. How are you able to stay grounded as a believer when you start, for lack of a better word, blowing up? You start having so much success, the team, starts having so much success. You go on that incredible winning streak, but you start to have a lot of success individually as well. You don't have that success without your team, so we certainly know that. But how are you able to stay grounded when a lot of people are probably starting to call your name and you get a lot more requests that were coming your way probably than they were maybe earlier in the season, and yet you're still a follower of Christ, you're still Brock Purdy. How are you able to kind of maintain and stay grounded in the midst of a lot of people elevating you in your status? Yeah, I think just the biggest thing for me was looking back on just my life um, and really the last year of when no one really cared about me. Like, who was I? Who was I, you know, trying to become um, in terms of, you know, a, a child of God and, and learning, um, you know, just being rooted in the word. And so when all this stuff started happening, it's like I, I was reminded by God and the Holy Spirit of, man, the world's going to try to tell you this and that, all these great things. But the minute, you know, something doesn't go right, they're going to be the first ones to, you know, try to tear you down and tell you that you're not good enough again or all these things. And so I was definitely reminded of that. Um, and I just made sure like, man, whatever I did this past year, and just in terms of being rooted with the word, with the word and, and present with God and every step and every moment, 
um, every rep, um, just driving to the facility, all that stuff of just keeping my eyes on God. I, would, I didn't want to change any of that. So when all the success and everything did start happening, I wasn't going to change. And I wasn't going to change for the world or anything. It was just continue to be myself, love on my teammates, be the same leader that I had been all year, keep my eyes on God and, and, and nothing more than that. It's still got to be pretty cool, though, when a 12-year-old or a couple of 12-year-olds come in and want to have your autograph. Because you were that 12-year-old once, I would imagine, too. Oh, yeah, no doubt. It was cool. I mean, kids right down the street, you know, growing up, I was the same kid, you know, in middle school, junior high. We moved out here, and um, I was literally down at the park, down in the neighborhood, right, right a couple of houses down, running, doing ladder drills with my brother and my dad, and, you know, talking about, you know, guys in the NFL. Um, and so to have a guy that you, that plays in the NFL live a couple houses down, pretty cool to go down and just get a signature. So Who was your guy? Like, if you could have gone into a house of somebody and got their autograph, who would have been the guy for you? Man, probably Drew Brees at the time. Yeah. You know, just growing up and, you know, him doing his thing with the Saints. And, yeah, if Drew Brees lived down, down the road, I would have been stoked and just go knock on the door at least once. Was so. it bizarre to meet Tom Brady knowing that he came in the league when you were – basically a year old yeah and you were facing him in a football game yeah it to me it it was wild just uh when we finished the dolphin game i don't really i didn't know who we're playing next or anything but then they were like yeah we got tom brady next and i'm like (laughs) that's wild like they tell me i have to get ready to start next week and i'm like wow this is crazy life comes at you fast you know tom has been playing football longer than i've ever been alive and it's just crazy so yeah pretty cool though what was the playoff run like for you? And I mean the good and the bad when you look back at it now because it all happened so fast. Yeah. There was no bye week for the Niners. You were the two seed, but you immediately were playing after that last week a home game against Seattle, and you played great, and they won that game, and then you played Dallas, and they had to, it felt like that was a real grind and a battle that you guys were able to kind of persevere through and get the W there. Uh, and then quickly, and then obviously everybody remembers what happened with the Eagles, but it happened all oh, so fast. Like it's within a three-week period, you're going through a playoff run that no seventh-round rookie quarterback has ever gone through and almost pulled it off going all the way to the Super Bowl. What was that? those three weeks like for you off the field, kind of staying grounded, learning the playbook, staying prepared for the game, but also staying prepared spiritually? Yeah, Um I'll say it was a long year um, just from being a backup to then starting games and then you get to the playoffs and it's like, man, now we now we need your best ball. So I learned a lot just with being on top of your stuff in terms of studying, being grounded spiritually every single day and being fed. Um, and so I learned a lot and it's not easy, like just going throughout the year and trying to be your best. So um, when the playoffs hit, man, it was it was all like all or nothing. Like this game means everything. You can go home that weekend if you don't play your best. Um, it's tournament play. Anything can happen. So for me, it was, man, how can I stay in the same routine? How can I still be spiritually fed um, with the word every day? You know, get around the guys that are believers and have them just give you the wisdom of their experiences and everything too. And um, from a from a godly you know point of view. And so. Definitely <clears throat> those guys that I mentioned earlier were pouring into me, and they helped me big time, especially for those first two weeks, three weeks really. Um, and so definitely thankful to have those kind of guys with me and, and just stay rooted, you know, even when there's, the stakes were high and every single moment was big in the playoffs. The conversations take place as your status, forgive me on the use of that word, but it's what it was as far as a public perception of you having all this success were you able to somehow have more conversations or, you know, be able to share your faith? I'm, I'm trying to think of the right way to say it because the platform gets bigger and more more people are listening, whether it's a media member or a teammate or whatever, where you're able to talk about the Lord a little bit more, have some deeper conversations because they're seeing you have success on the field, maybe having an opportunity off the field to also talk about Jesus. Yeah. Um... I think the media, for sure, there was, you know, questions brought up in terms of like, you know, how do you do it? And um, for, for myself, it was honestly, you want the truth because this is the truth. And I'm not going to just say, you know, like a worldly answer of, you know, I, I look in the mirror every night and I tell myself I'm good. It's none of that. It's yeah. it's man like this is who God has called me to be. And I've believed that from day one. I believe that Jesus Christ did come down and died for my sins and and rose again and and he's living you know he's living and sitting beside god on the throne and so i believe that it's not just some story fairy tale thing it's it's real and it it, is, it allows me to 
you know, stay level headed and, and real with life. And I know what my purpose is. And so mm. that all has allowed me to play my game. It has allowed me to play football at this level. And, um, you know, um, I, I don't go into the locker room telling everyone, you know, I believe this or that, or it, it just comes about, you know, when guys ask me or they're interested and, in, you know, what helps you do what you do, then yeah, I share. Um, but you know, I just, the biggest thing for me is just loving all my teammates, you know, being where they're at, relating with them, um, being a relatable teammate. Um, and then, you know, if they ask about what, what I believe in, then I'm, I'm all, I'm all for sharing. So that's how I go about it. As we wind down, I, I don't want to kind of repaint the entire picture of what happened in the Philly game, but I know watching as a fan, even talking to your parents, I sensed really quickly when you weren't going back in the game, James one coming to mind in the Bible. Consider it joy when you face trials of many kind. And I thought, I wonder if Brock is recognizing in the moment that this is a James 1 moment for you. Or if it took a little bit for you to get through the game to see that this was a moment where you could still find joy somehow in the midst of the season ending in a way that you certainly didn't want it to end. Will you explain that? Take me through that of finding somehow finding joy in the midst of obviously not the way you wanted to see it end. Yeah, um, definitely thought about that in that moment. Um, and for me, it's in the moment, I'm not trying to be so consumed with, man, we're losing, we're losing, we're losing, which it's hard because you pour everything you have, you know, for the, those moments to win. Well, you're one win away from going to the Super Bowl and playing in the biggest game of your life. Yeah. And there's so many people in that organization that you don't want to let down and all that kind of stuff. But I, th I think there's a bigger a bigger thing at hand, and that's that's what God's doing. And I in that moment, it's like, man, how can I keep my eyes on the Lord and and truly believe that there's going to be something that comes from this, and that He has something written out bigger than we all could ever imagine. And so, and that's not saying that's this is going to be the Brock Purdy story or anything like that of this 30 for 30. It's for everyone, man, and I believe that. And so. Um, you know, for in that moment, that's what I was thinking of. Like, I know what you're doing, God, and I don't know what you're doing exactly, but I know that you're the you're the author of all of it, and that you're gonna write out something that's pretty beautiful for everyone in this life. Um, in, in for that game, and so that's where I was at mentally with that. That's how I handled it, and I had joy. I found joy in that moment because of that. Do you see Jesus differently now today than you did maybe since we talked last, which was I think July of 2021? or even since you came into the NFL and officially was drafted back last April of 2022, do you see Jesus differently now after you've gone through this season than maybe you did before? Um, I don't know if I see him differently. I definitely have just learned um, just different things, um, just about who he is and his love and, like I said, how faithful he is. But um, I would just say more than anything, man, like for me, you know, when we last – talked in 2021 and then early on in 2022 I did a lot of you know just trying to hold on to my life and I wanted to I wanted to go this way or that way and so um, I think the biggest thing was man just letting go and just letting him truly use me in any avenue that he he wanted to hmm. and needed to and so I don't know just seeing seeing that and letting him just truly surrendering rather than trying to control every little thing that I've done so I think that's something that he taught me definitely early on in 2022 um, I didn't know if I was gonna be playing in the NFL or not Right. And um, yeah, I just let, let that up to him, and, and here we are. So so my last question is really just kind of a fun question. Your dad, when we talked to him, mentioned, and your mom too, that you used to sit around the house with your, with your probably friends and family on a Super Bowl Sunday and watch the game and then go out and play a little bit and come back in. You wanted to see the game. Will you watch the game this Sunday, or is this something like because of what just happened? You're like, yeah, you know what? I don't, I don't need to watch this game. Have you thought about that at all? Yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, I think, you know, at first when the game ended, it's like, man, how can I watch the game? You know, I believe that that should have been us and sure. all that kind of thing. Just the competitive side of me, but um, I feel like after I've cooled down a little bit, it's gonna be cool just to see two teams go at it for one, and then two like understand and watch the game and see if I can learn something um, of, you know, what I could have done better or whatever. Um, and also envisioning just playing in the game, you know, and believing that we can get back there. So um, that's something I've always done. Yeah, growing up, I've always, you know, played outside. And then at the end of the game, I usually come in and watch. And that's when we saw, you know, Eli Manning throwing a Mario Manningham at the end of the game. Or, <laughs> yeah. or just crazy things like that. Yeah. Um, 
And but yeah, I'll I'll probably end up watching the game. That's good. Yep. Here's Brock Purdy. Uh, thanks for doing this. You didn't have to do this, but you said yes, and uh, we just appreciate you. Uh, appreciate your stance for Christ and how bold you are, and uh, we're always rooting for you. So yes, thanks for joining us. Yep. Thank you, guys.